Welcome to this video vlog about the process of the IRB. While the previous vlog talked about, well, why is the IRB there? Now we are going more into how to submit a proposal to the IRB. Now, as I mentioned, we are not the Spanish acquisition. We are trying to make the process smooth. And this is also true for submitting a research proposal to the IRB. If you want to submit a research proposal, you first have to think, well, should I do IRB? Which people should do IRB? Well, all faculty, PhD researchers and research master students that are planning to do research with data related to living human persons, they require a IRB review. In a later phase, the master thesis proposals will be added. So important already is this research status and also the aspect of approaching human beings um, in your research. What do we check? Well, as mentioned, we check the quality checks on participants, privacy, data storage, consents. We do not che check the e contribution of your research. We want to have a description of your research to understand, well, what are participants doing and what harm do we do to participants in terms of privacy or what are they protected. That's why we require a description of your research, but we don't evaluate the contribution. Now, what are the way to see whether you need IRB approval? Well, you can go to this website of the IRB where you can follow a flow charts and depending on the outcome, you know whether you need IRB approval, yes or no. Most of the time, if you go through these uh, IRB charts, there are two major outcomes. Uh, and that's important that I want to stress today in this video. You either have the standardized research protocol or you might have the full review uh, required for your proposal. Now, what do we have? The standardized research protocol are really the way to smooth the research process. The standardized research protocols cover about 90% of the research that we do at Tyson, and so they can get a quick approval. Um, it's important to stress that it all relates to people doing research with human subjects. For example, if you use databases from the Tilburg approved database list and they contain information on CEO compensation, then you're not directly approaching people and so you might not have to have IRB review. But if you do research with human subjects, the two major outcomes are actually the first category, the standardized research protocol, 90% of the research falls under this, or full review if you do a little bit more uh, extra procedures that don't follow fall under standardized research. What is standardized research? Well, standardized research is research that we all know in certain departments. For example, SRP1 are the incentivized experiments, the experiments that typically happen in Tilburg University in the lab or on Prolific or MTurk or other ways of where human subjects can be approached uh, to conduct your research. Um, as long as this research is relatively standard, you can uh, submit under standardized research protocol one. Standardized research protocol two are the judge studies on judgment and decision making. Often marketing studies fall under the, this category. Um, how do you react to an advertisement, um, survey research? Um, these kind of things fall under the idea of SRP2. SRP3, we also know that people in our department do interviews, uh, qualitative interviews, case studies. Well, they fall under SRP3 if you are doing standardized recordings of participants. Um, then you have this SRP3 uh, that uh, is important for your case study research or interviews. The advantage of these standardized research pro protocols is that you only have to do limited information provision. You have to describe your research in part one and you um, complete part three of the form, which you can find on our website. So here it's quite easy. You have to fill out only two aspects uh, of our full form. 
Why? Well, we already know that people are protected because you fall fall under the standardized way of doing things. So privacy issues, probably you follow that protocol and it's up to the researcher to declare, yes, I follow that protocol. What is an example here? For example, experiments in center lab or on a crowdsourcing platform, participants make choices that can determine their money. The choices are fully anonymous and there is no deception, little risk, and everything included in the instructions is real. Then you have SRP1. Why is this standardized? Well, you actually give a small remuneration. The data is not sensitive. There is minimal risk. It doesn't involve deception. There is an anonymity guaranteed. Uh, people participate on a voluntary basis. As long as you have the feeling, well, all these things that are in my research comply with what is actually here in the bullet points, you can simply go for SRP1 and you don't need to complete um, the full form, but you only complete the one part one and part three of the submission form. Now, here is another thing. A natural field experiment, an experiment conducted in real life setting in which participants are unaware that they are part of the experiment. Now, if I go back to the standardized uh, research protocol, I see that you have to provide informed consent uh, to participants. Then this research, I cannot ask informed consent. So here we think there might be more risk to participants. And for this proposal, instead of going for a standardized research protocol, you might need to have a full review. Other examples of full review, you might, for example, want to test whether people are stressed. And because of that stress intervention, you gather saliva. Well, probably that's a full review too. Or you do a topic about very sensitive uh, issues um, like um, suicide kind of ideas or uh, discrimination. These kind of ideas probably um, involve more intrusive questions and thus might not fall under the standardized research protocol. But the good news is that if we look at Tyson, a lot of these proposals fall under the standardized research protocol. This was 2020, 2021. And in 2021, we did not have SRP3 yet fully operationalized. And so a lot of these interviews went for full review, which are now already in a category called um, standardized research protocol. So the majority are actually um, exempt via the standardized research. And how much time do they take? Well, five day average we have now, 10 working days, that's the uh, aim, but we are uh, faster than the aim. The full review, the limited proposals that go for full review, well, they are 15 um, working days, but we are here on a 10 day average. Um, so it's important to know that the majority goes via these SRPs if you do research with human subjects. And this is expected to increase because we have a third one uh, on qualitative research and interviews. So this is how we try to make the process quite smooth. Uh, we try to guide you. Uh, and and what, what do we do? Well, not only guide you, but first of all, make the process simple through these SRPs. And second, we also try to give fast turnaround time so that you can go on with your research. If you have more questions, I suggest you visit our website again where you uh, also see more details about how these SRP works, because if you do an interview, it's best to also read the bullet points regarding the, the uh, to SRP3 to see, well, does my standardized interview fall under the standardized research, or do I do more than the standard, which might require full review. So this is in a nutshell, the procedure. I wish you good luck with your research. And if you have questions, do not hesitate to visit the website or contact one of us.